everybody, Marcos Viegas here being joined with Tom Loeffler, the Managing Director of K2 Promotions. And uh, we're on the road to this uh, Golovkin Kelbrook fight September 10th. This is uh, Gennady's first time fighting over there in the UK. And uh, what a journey on your end, right, to uh, get to Kelbrook. Must have been really stressful, no? <laughs> yeah, it was a long road. You know, we started with Canelo and then uh, we went to uh, BJ Saunders. Thought we could unify all the titles. Um, then uh, when Eddie Hearn heard we were talking to BJ Sanders, BJ made it clear that uh, Billy Joe made it clear he wanted to fight in the UK, not over here. So he said, okay, we'll talk to Frank Warren, we'll fight over in the UK. That didn't go very far. You can tell when a fighter is like really serious about wanting to fight Gennady and when, you know, it's just like, okay, we'll test the waters, but maybe we'll fight him next year or something. So, so then uh, Eddie Hearn proposed uh, Eubank Jr., which would be a great fight. And we went down, we went over like a month of negotiating with uh, with Eddie, everything was set on our side, and uh, he was just finalizing the details or trying to finalize the detail with uh, with the Eubank side. Couldn't get the the fight signed. We had a deadline. Otherwise, we had to come over, back over here to fight on HBO in the states. And uh, Eddie was getting frustrated. No Sky was getting frustrated. So when they didn't when they didn't sign before the deadline, Eddie said, "You know what, Kel Brook, the fight with Vargas doesn't look good. Let me see if Kel will take the fight." calls me back two two hours later he was kind of not joking about it but he wasn't you know 100 percent serious but let me see how Cal you know will react and they talked to Cal and his trainer and, and uh, two hours later he said we'll take the fight we literally changed the names from uh, Eubank to Brook on the contract and within two days we had a signed contract and we were able to announce the fight so that's that's the journey with the fight um, this will be the third uh, media event that we've done we had the uh, opening press conference in New York, then we had a press conference in London, uh, which we had a, a tremendous response from the media uh, and the fans in both cities, and then we always want to keep the LA media informed, so uh, Gennady was down in LA doing his medical test today, and so we were able to do this media lunch, so uh, it's it's turned out to, to be a great, uh, a great promotion so far. Uh, so many follow-up questions uh, on, on what you said. Uh, the first that comes to mind is when you started hearing uh, the demands from Eubank, where you think like, man, what's going on here? Where, where's all this coming from? Well, you know, like I said, our deal with Eddie was, was set. It was signed. So really the demands were from Eubank on Eddie, you know, the, uh, as far as um, ticket prices, Security under. That sounds I like know. Mayweather type oh, stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It just it. it but I know Eddie. Uh, Eddie was really, uh, you know, he's one of the most easygoing guys that I've I've worked with, and he was trying to, you know, figure out a way to keep everything going. And uh, at some point, it was just, he was getting frustrated. Sky was getting frustrated. So it just got to a point where they couldn't they couldn't make it happen. If everything goes the right way with Kel Brook, look, that fight that fight's still there. I mean, Eubanks, there's nothing. Uh, you can't take anything away from Eubank as far as his fighting style or his level of talent in the ring. But if we can make the fight in the future, I mean, that's a, that's a, a terrific fight for a future. So you said that he told you maybe half-chokingly, maybe not, Kill Brooks interested in the fight. When it was told to that and you relayed the message back to Abel and Gennady, were they kind of like... Wait a second, Kel Brook? Welterweight Kel Brook? Is, is he serious? Well, Gennady was actually, he was in Kazakhstan. He was actually sleeping at the time. So I talked to his managers in Germany. And, uh, you know, when Abel was on board, they were on board. And, uh, look, Kel has, had told Eddie before that he wanted to fight Gennady. I mean, by that uh, that time, we already had a fight set. And and uh, he just wanted to, he got frustrated. He wanted to, like, fight against the best uh the best in the world, and so when they when they were having issues with their Vargas fight, Eddie said, "Look, I can solve both both uh, problems. It'll be a, a a massive fight over in the UK, and and that's the the reaction that we got from the fans in the UK for Gennady finally coming over there to fight and uh, fighting one of their fan favorites uh, against uh, Cal Brook. It's been a, a great reaction. The the arena sold out, and uh, we expect a, a great." Uh, response on the Sky pay-per-view, so I think it'll, uh, it's it's really turned out to be the most uh, most talked about fight so far uh, this year. People will bring up the size difference between both fighters, I know that's the main criticism of the fight, they feel it could be similar to Canelo Khan where Gennady's just too big, what do you have to say to those people that do bring up that point and they feel that Gennady's way too big for Cal? Look, we can't criticize anybody 
willing to sign a contract to get in the ring with Gennady. A lot of fighters talk about fighting Gennady, but uh, Kell Brook actually uh, signed the contract. So, um, look, on paper, it looks like a middleweight versus a, a welterweight, but when you look at the scales, I mean, it's a completely different situation. Uh, Kell Brook, he weighed in uh, the 30-day weigh-in. He was 176. He was actually 11 pounds heavier. You know, people kind of, when I keep saying the same thing, like Gennady doesn't have a problem making middleweight. He always weighs in at 159. Um, you know, Cal Brook, from what Eddie said, always had to work really hard to get down to 147, um, as many fighters do, to, to get down to, the, to a certain weight category. And, uh, and then we'll put weight on, uh, you know, again. So, so this is uh, just like if Gennady ever fought at 168 pounds, it would just be less weight that he would have to drop. And that's the way we look at it with, uh, with Cal. Cal's physically a big guy. He's only an inch shorter than, uh, than Gennady. And uh, I, I just look at it as not having to kill himself to make the weight. He can make 160 pounds comfortably. And when you see them in the ring or, or uh, you know, at the weigh-in standing off, you know, when it was at the press conference, people saw they're, they're virtually the same size. And, and uh, Cal is a very thick, thick guy, has thick legs, and uh, that's really where his, his weight comes from. But, you know, it's not really the physical size or the weight. It's the... <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the heart that he has, you know, to actually sign a contract and get in the ring, and that's that's what we put the most uh, value on, and and that's what what we admire the most and respect the most about uh, Cal is that he actually, when so many people turn down uh, the opportunity to fight Gennady, look, look, when I I always grew up, Marcos, that when you have a world champion with multiple titles and you're willing to fight some, it's like you would. Uh, anyone would jump at that opportunity. I want to fight. I want to fight him for all his titles. And now it's like, it's like all the hoops we have to jump through just to get someone to get in the ring with Gennady is, uh, it, it's surprising to me. But that's where, uh, that's where we give uh, Cal and uh, Eddie Hearn a lot of credit. Uh, grandes huevos. They would say that in Spanish. That's uh, what I was getting. For, uh, Kel Brook, you mentioned uh, earlier that uh, you kind of have a feeling when someone's serious about fighting Gennady. Did you get that feeling with the Canelo team that they were serious or, or do you feel that they were just kind of doing that because Canelo spoke and they were speaking and that they kind of had to do that to save face a bit? Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, everyone has a strategy from their side. Um, we have a good relationship with Golden Boy, um, you know, in the follow-up to that fight. Uh, you know, Eric Goldman told me that they want to fight in September of next year. That's the date they're shooting for. So I, I stay in regular contact with them, and if anything changes, look, he's got a fight coming up a week after Gennady uh, in, in Dallas Stadium. So uh, he's going to go to Dallas? Uh, no, we're, we're I think we're pretty much done with the Canelo <laughs> fights until we can actually until we can actually uh, sign the contract. I mean, that was what we went to that fight when uh, when Gennady was a mandatory for him, and and uh, you know looking to build the build the promotion, uh, but. You know, look, Canelo has his own uh, career path. He's shown in the past he's not afraid to fight people. I'm not sure, you know, the decision that they had made as far as going back down to 154. But, you know, that that's uh, that's their prerogative. Uh, you know, once the the WBC title was vacated, there was no more obligation to fight to fight Gennady other than you know the fans that want to see to see the fight. Naturally, from our side, we'd like to see that fight. But, you know, if we can make that fight in a year. I think uh, that, that's clearly the biggest fight that can be made in boxing. And uh, if we can make it for September 2017, uh, you know, for me, that's great. It's just, uh, I know Gennady, Abel, everybody on our side would have liked to see that fight, uh, like to see that fight uh, sooner. Me too. I know uh, fans would agree as well. Everybody wants to see the fight. Hey, Tom, thank you for giving me time. Really appreciate it. Right. Tom Loeffler, this is Marcos Vegas for Fight Up TV.